Well, I've been thinking about doing something just for fun, and there's nothing more fun than a top. I haven't turned a top for a while, so I'm going to make a special project. I'm going to make a spinning top with a base, and I guess you could call it a box top. And I'm going to do a little bit of a twist on this. I'm going to make a base for this that uh, you've probably seen that sort of thing made. Now, I've always called this an executive top. I'm not sure where I got that term. Maybe I made it up, maybe I stole it. But this is the kind of project that might sit on the desk of somebody who works in an office. And it's a, it looks like a, a very nice piece of uh, art or something. Well, you're looking at that pile of scrap wood that I glued together and turned into this executive top. There's the top spinning around. It's not too bad. I'm pretty happy with that. So stay tuned and I'll show you how I put this together and turn the top and the base for it. But I'm going to do a little bit of a glue up. Now I'm not a segmented turner. Uh, I don't want to get into that, but I can glue up a couple pieces of wood. Now right at the very center, I got a nice piece of paduk that I'm going to put in there. It's nice and hard. It's a little bit reddish right now. And then I'm going to just glue this up and I'll show you maybe snippets of different stages of gluing it up. That's not the purpose here. I'm not going to, you know, try to teach you anything about segmenting because uh, that's a different ball game. So let's uh, get started here and I'm going to get some pieces uh, ready to glue up. Now in this particular shot I've got that paduk wood in the center. I've got a little bit of maple on either side of it and I've got those offset. Here is another glue up of two other pieces of wood that I'll use later. There's that paduk and the maple. And I'm just experimenting at this time. I've never really done this before. But I've got a lot of scraps that aren't going to be any good for most kinds of turnings. And I'm just experimenting. I'm putting pieces together to see how they would look best glued up. And I'm using a lot of clamps. I think I have 20 clamps sitting there on my workbench. So I clamp a couple pieces together and let it sit for two or three hours. Then I clamp some more wood and let that sit. It wasn't really all that time consuming, but it just took a lot of messing around and clamping and cleaning up. And there's a good cross section. There's another shot of some pieces glued together. And I think that's just about the final combination of wood that I've got in this shot here. And you'll notice on the top, it says top. That's the part where the top is actually going to be. And I'm unclamping perhaps the final version of this. So let's go do some turning. Now I spent a good part of yesterday gluing this piece of wood up. It's not very pretty right now, but I'm really anxious to take it down around and see what it looks like. Now in some of these early clips that I'm turning, I've got the film speeded up quite a bit. It's not all that interesting and I'm just taking this down to round to uh, kind of get into the serious turning of this. And the first part I'll do will be the top. Now this is the end that I'm going to take the top from and this is the base of my little project. I'm going to put a tenon on here that will fit one of my smaller jaws. Now right now I'm establishing a tenon or a spigot for my smaller scroll chuck. The jaws go down to about an inch and an eighth. It's pretty small, but it's a very good dimension for this sort of a project. Right now I'm going to take the rest of my block of wood down to round so I can see exactly what I've got here. And at the end, I'm going to also establish a tenon on the other side of my piece of wood. Well, finally, I'm ready to do a little bit of serious turning. This is the base for my executive top. I've got the top in my lathe. I moved over to the Powermatic. Let's do a little turning. Now, I have a basic shape in mind for my top. And what I'm doing right now is I'm establishing the very bottom and the high point of the spinning part of the top, the widest diameter. Here I'm just working on what's going to be the point eventually. 
and I'm using a small spindle gouge, I believe, at this time, and just working my way down there. And I'll give you a head-on view of that in just a second. Now this is a very good angle of my spindle gouge addressing the end grain of this top. Cutting across it, of course, is going to give me the better finish. And the pattern is going to emerge very nicely in this area as I turn this part of my top. I'm going to complete this. I'm going to make some finishing cuts. I'm going to go to my grinder and put a new sharpen on my tool. Make one more pass eventually. And then I'm going to do a little bit of sanding. And I'm going to finish this part of my top at this point. And I won't go back to it. Here I've got a set of calipers and I'm measuring what I need to make is the diameter. The top has got to be smaller than the base into which it sits. And here I'm making one more final pass. That padu cuts very nicely. You can see the uh, the shine I'm getting off that cut. So there we go. Very nice. And it really is going to pop a lot more when I get some finish on that. Now, in case I fail to mention it some other place in this video, I'm using Triple E and Shellow Wax as a finish. And I'm just kind of playing around with the pattern here. This is kind of cool to look at. All right, back to a little turning. I'm defining the handle, the very tip of it, and the part that goes into the widest diameter of my top. And that was a very short view of my bowl gouge as I'm just hogging out some of that wood that's going to be the handle area. And I wanted to show you this profile, this perspective, rather than my tool work. I just wanted to show you the form of this taking shape as I cut away wood. And as the pattern of that glued up section emerges. Right now I've got an eighth inch parting tool. And I'm using it slightly as a skew chisel just to go back and forth and reduce the diameter of my handle. I find it really hard to get in there with some sort of a spindle gouge or even a small bowl gouge. And I'm playing around with the handle and uh, the final shape that I'm going to come up with. So I'm very close to parting it off and I'm going to part that off and we'll watch the next segment. There's a shot of the finished top. And I've been working on the base of this. There's the inside. Try to match that profile as well as I can. And maybe we'll get that to line up and that grain will kind of flow through there down from the top down into the base. So a little bit more work on this and I'll finish the base of my project. Now here's where I'm at with my little top project. I've got the top completed. Let me just turn that around and give you a view of the bottom of the top. And just for your reference, I've got Paduk right here in the center. I've got a little bit of maple around that rectangle. That bit right there is cherry and that's walnut. And I put uh, a nice hard wood on the very center for my tip and that worked out very good. It's a pretty good spinner. Here's the question at this point. Here's my base right here. And if I left that straight, well, I'm not going to get that effect that I'm getting right here, uh, turning a curve in there. So I need to make some decisions about that. There's another way that can sit in there. And I don't like this ridge right here. I'll put that back on the lathe and do some turning. Um, here's the, the bottom right there. I've just got a little bit of uh, Triple E and some shallow wax on that. But does it spin? Well, I'm making this a two-part series. So this is the end of part one. In part two, I'll complete the project and turn the base 
into which the top will sit. So I hope to see you there, and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for tuning in.